Yo, what's up guys? How you guys doing? Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are living right. Um, first of all, I appreciate everybody subscribing to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you guys are new around here, hit the subscribe button. Be part of the family. Let's grow together. Alright, listen guys, today I have a different uh, kind of video for you guys today. All right? Now, just as you can see in the, you know, in the description this video is about exposing the most organized scammers in zambia right now now these guys are super organized they're super simple they don't even have a website nothing like that they're super simple but super organized if they come to you and try to scam you you will fall for it that's how organized these scammers are i think they're a group of people but anyway i want to tell you about this it happened to me so i just hope it doesn't happen to you of course i didn't get scammed and I hope you won't get scammed either when they come to you. So make sure you watch this video until the end. All right. So I'll just be reading through through this phone. Okay. So this is how um, this is how it all started. It all started with the text. So it all started with the text from this man right here, named um, Mr. Richard Lewis. Mr. Richard Lewis from South Africa. Now, what I personally do when I receive a random text on WhatsApp. I always have to do um, a Google search, uh, you know, reverse search on the photo just to know who the person is, especially if they're telling me about business or whatever. So I do the search and uh, yeah, his name is Richard Lewis, but obviously somebody's just trying to impersonate, okay? Because this person is not a person that would WhatsApp you, you know what I mean, right? So anyway, um, it starts with the text and then it goes like this. It says, Good morning, how are you and how is Zambia? This is Dr. Richard Lewis here in Cape Town, South Africa. And I respond and say, I'm the one in green. And then I say, hello, hello, how are you? I'm great and Zambia is good too. And then he responds, I'm fine despite uh, COVID-19 challenges. It's, it's my pleasure to hear from you. I need some personal assistance from you. I'm carrying out a research project with the British Royal Museum in England. We are looking on countries colonized by Britain. Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. We are into collecting and buying old British coins for King George and Queen Elizabeth, for those that were used before Zambia got its independence. So the shillings, the tickets, and the pennies. Then he asks me and says, do you have any idea about uh, these old British coins? And I respond and say, I have never heard of these coins before, but I might know some, a few old folks that might have them. What's their worth? So he doesn't respond to my question on what's their worth, and then he goes on and says, Okay, let me extend my request. We had visited Zambia in 2018 during the Komboka ceremony in Western Province, and also the Nchuala ceremony in the Eastern Province. We went flat out in the, in the rural areas in research for the coins. While there, we, we had engaged a teacher who helped us to communicate with the local people, and we left with him some flyers with specifications of the coins. We have been trying to get in touch with the same teacher for the past few weeks now, but his line is not reachable, okay? And the villagers are calling us despite their poor English. The challenge we are failing to come to conclusion cause of language barrier with the local people. I thought possibly if I could text you their contact number, you call them and find out how many coins they have gathered. That's my humble request to you. So after he sends all this paragraph, you know, the funny thing is that he sent all this within within a few seconds. All right. And then just like that, I knew, OK, this might not make too much sense because he sent so much. He said so much in just a few seconds. There's no way somebody can type all that in just, you know, like 10 seconds. So it was clear that he was coping and pesting. These guys have a script. So I said, OK, maybe this might just come. So let's see where he texts me. So I go on and I respond and say, okay, that doesn't sound like a problem. You can do that. But I would like to find out where did you get my, my phone number from because it was a completely random number, you know? So he says, thank you. The villager's contact number is, that's the contact number that he gave me. And uh, I'm exposing the contact number too. Maybe Zikta can do something about this. I don't know. And then he also gives me the details of the coins. Um, he says, the details of the coins are King George the Sixth." Uh, blah 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 from 1906 to 1964 and then he says our offer is $1,500 per single coin and I was like what 
$1,500 per single coin. Nice. And of course, 10% commission for you depending on the number of coins. I said, oh, 10% for me, that's nice. Then he goes on and says, if they have managed to collect more than 10 coins, advise them to send you a picture of the coins and forward me for verification. I got your contact number from Grasson Justin, a farmer who was based in Lusaka, Zambia. He's now in California, USA. Now, to be honest with you, that name actually sounded familiar because I associate with a lot of people. I, I, I don't really keep up. So I, I tell him, okay, the name sounds familiar. Okay, let me call him. And then I called the man, all right? So the man's name, um, he told me his name was Mr. Nyemba from, uh, is it Njasi or Nyasi? I don't know, like somewhere in, uh, in North, is it North Mongu, ahead of Mongu, somewhere there. Yeah, and I had traveled to Mongu once. You guys can check out that video as well. So um, I thought, okay, he's probably in those deep, deep rural areas, you know, those deep villages those deep villages and uh you know that's what i you know basically thought so I was, okay yeah after speaking to him he did confirm that he was in a very deep village and uh, he did not have a phone so after i spoke to him he was sounding like an old man you know about kulile fidia you know sounded like a very old man and then um he told me that uh that they had gathered about uh 22 coins 22 coins i told him can you send pictures he said no uh he's i'm using like a small phone and he was speaking yanja he was speaking yanja and uh, i think i was tonga he was mixing and shy and shy and shy he kept saying that at the end i think that means thank you i, I understand i understand almost all zambian almost all zambian language not everything but yeah so um after that um i go back to the man and then i uh, i tell him Hello, he says he, he's found about 22 coins. And the thing is, he's using a small phone, so I have asked him to find a bigger phone so he can send me some pics. Because the man, Mr. Nyemba, had told me that um, he has a nephew that uh, has a big phone, but he was in the field with the kettle and stuff, so he had to wait for him. So after that, I got a text from uh, a random WhatsApp number again with the pictures. So, okay, the pictures, these look legit and then I forwarded to the man so after forwarding the pictures of the coins to the man um, he goes on and says that's a good number after after I told him they're about 22 coins he says that's a good number where did you fly I'm so happy and ready to pay out thirty three thousand dollars for 22 coins and then after he sees the coins he goes like wow this is excellent they are the ones we are running late on our schedule and supposed to deliver the coins at the queen's museum in england on saturday morning okay kindly advise him to travel to lusaka so we could meet tomorrow morning around 10 a.m at fnb headquarters for payments i mean that's the legit language you know so he goes on and says confirm if he's able to travel so i can make arrangements for my flight now so i said okay i'm on it so after speaking to the man and asking him if he could travel, he said he never had transport. So I respond to this Mr. Mr. Richard Lewis and tell him, uh, yes, he's able to travel without a problem. The issue is that from his village to Osaka, he doesn't have the transportation to travel. He said he will need to come with his nephew, which simply means he will need about 700 kwacha. That's 350k for both people, you know, the transport. So he goes like, okay, I understand. Kindly agree and assist him to travel. We will reimburse the cost tomorrow morning when we meet. I'm ready to make a refund for all expenses. And besides, you you pay you 10% commission, which can be calculated out of the number of coins. He wanted to remind me of how much is at stake for me, you know? So, I mean, that's just a typical scammer move. So yeah, psychology, you know? So... I go like, uh, yes, I thought of doing that. I don't have 700 kwacha now. I will only uh, I'll only have cash tomorrow. Now, I lied on this one because I knew where this was going. You know, I did have the money, but I wasn't going to send it to a bunch of people I didn't know, you know. So he goes like, okay, partner. Okay, partner with someone and uh, assist, uh, assist them to travel. And I said, okay, let me try to do that. So after a while of me not communicating to him, he says... I would really appreciate if they start off now so we could uh, commence transactions tomorrow morning. And then I respond and say, the only way that would be possible if I'm if I manage to, to find someone to partner with as soon as possible. If I don't manage uh, to find somebody to partner with, um, you can uh, send 
You can send money through means like Bitcoin. It's easy for me to flip it into Quacha, then send it to them. Where is your current location? All right. So I gave him an idea. After telling him I never had the 700 Quacha, I told him, okay, since you're so rich, dude, I mean, just use Bitcoin. Send me Bitcoin. It's going to take seconds to reach my, my blockchain wallet. Then I can flip the Bitcoins for Quacha and then send it to them. You know? So um, he didn't respond to that. And then he says, and, and then I say, I said, okay, if maybe the Bitcoin would be too hard to use, you should try this link here. So I sent him a Grabify link, all right? If you guys don't know what the Grabify link is, this is what I use to usually trace where uh, a person is communicating from, right? I create a link and then it shows me exactly what phone they're using and where where they are, you know, like communicating from. But with this link, I kind of added a little source to this link. I, uh, you know, I, I added my own program. So, so much so that when he clicked on it, it showed me exactly where he was texting from. and. The location viewed Kalingalinga Unza area somewhere there. That's where this guy was. This Dr. Lewis from South Africa was actually communicating from. All right. So, and and I also uh, understood that he was he was using a parallel number. There's what you call a parallel application where you're using uh, a Zambian number, but it's going to appear South African if you pick South Africa, something like that. It's what we call the parallel number. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to hack his real, real number, but due time, due time. So 